why have you decided to run for the Star Atlas Council? I gotta be honest. I my first intention was I wasn't really planning to run. However, uh, after having a big brainstorm session with our our council at Coexist and also uh, talking to the of Turkish community, and then one of the main reasons why that I kind of debating is the fact that how much time that we can uh, sort of reserve and allocate for this. It is still kind of out in the limbo, but I honestly wanted to be part of this because yeah, with the finance, the financial stuff and, and the legal side of things, personally, I don't really have any legal advice authority whatsoever. So on that part, I don't think I will bring an extra thing to the table. However, in terms of the education and creating a good game and uh, and this is coming from a guy who did his PhD dissertation on using games as an educational environment and just love for the games and how great MMORPGs are created. I've been, we played a lot of them and currently we are in the Star Atlas. And um, we also have our own community game, as you know, the Star Atlas community game by, by Coexist. So from on the Unreal Engine, Engine 5 side, and an actual MMORPG side, I think we can, I can bring a lot of great things to the table in terms of how we can progress throughout the, the stages of this game. Uh, as you know, DAOs, the decentralized autonomous organizations, these are really new technologies. I mean, there isn't, I, I, it is really hard for me to say, hey, there is this DAO, and this is the perfect DAO, DAO out there, that they are doing everything right. So there's also sort of a, almost like an exploratory learning here where we go through it and we kind of learn through it too, even from the legal aspects of it. I mean, uh, there are a lot of states or even countries that, uh, you know, crypto is regulated and um, and these needs to be evolved in time and we learn by it too. However, personally, I think in terms of a game related proposals and drafts and going mm -hmm. through them um, and also being part of the community because Right. And not that an ego, but I was one of the guys who uh, were kind of, I guess, up in the front, kind of, you know, for sure, mouth loud for to speak. So being in front, I guess, kind of uh, led me to this path. Right. Way. And I think that uh, we, we have questions that you could elaborate more into these things. Right. Like, uh, we all know uh, Coexist has been in the game for a while and they've contributed a lot in many ways. Like you mentioned, it might not be on the financial side or the, the legalese side of things, but uh, do you do you want to go into and elaborate a little bit more on what specialized knowledge or skills do that you do bring to the table? Uh, you did mention your your uh, educational side, but maybe uh, a little bit more in depth. Absolutely, yeah. I kind of jump to the next question, I guess. That's all right. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, being part of the community and uh, being part of the a content creator community in a way that even though I'm personally not a content creator, but as a guild, we are creating a lot of content. And I think maybe there is there are two things here. Uh, when you create too much and then the community is kind of, I don't want to say looks up to you, but there is a good example after, hey, you know, there is this body creating these type of contents and there is even a guild who's creating a game. Uh, so people are, their expectations from Star Atlas is much bigger. So. Uh, we collectively thought that if there is someone that is sort of pretty much the word mouth or the uh, the noise or the sound of the community, uh, I think a lot of the people will rely on to the people who are kind of all the way in the front and know who these people are and kind of open. And, and there is this privacy thing going on in cryptocurrency, which is totally fair. But personally, I think if people know who these people are in real life, and there's sort of a much tighter trust between the uh, the council members and the community itself, because those are the council members. If you're gonna uh, think about it, those are kind of going gonna go over through the uh, proposal. They're not gonna actually the people who are going to do proposing, but they are still are their sort of representatives of mm -hmm. the community. So uh, with Star Atlas, uh, the Coex has created so many different kind of projects, and um, and I think it's only fair that, you know, uh, we also have a representative uh, in this council. Without a doubt, it's only right. You know, you guys wear your hearts on your sleeves and you are all doxxed more or less as, a, as the leaders and members of Coexist. 
and it goes a long way when it comes to trust in this space. Uh, Absolutely. There, there are risks uh, associated with it, but it just goes to show the integrity uh, of you all and the t- determination of what you guys really want to uh, bring forth when it comes to just the Star Alice community. You know, it, we can talk about all the, you can maybe mention some at the end, some achievements and uh, milestones that you've made as a guild, maybe bullet points on what's what's been created so far. You know, we have the only times just to, to jumpstart that, but there's plenty more. And also you guys becoming the first place winners of the first Copa event, uh, which says a lot. So, Absolutely. Uh, but and, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go no, ahead. I was going to say, but we'll get into it right and see the next question. What would you like to see with everything that you've been a part of and contributed so far, Star Atlas becoming in the next X amount of years? And by this time, a lot of the community, at least the Turkish community, and to some extent the global community knows that there is for coexist, and especially for me too. And I, I think this idea of mine is shared among the Star Atlas community. Uh, as a metaverse, this is a great place to be able to build things and uh, make our lives much better, easier, and create a different type of collaboration and communication that doesn't have any limits whatsoever. Uh, being part of the idea of decentralization, um, letting uh, pretty much breaking away from the chains that are the banks are putting on us. And so this is almost like, and again, this might kind of sound really sort of futuristic and sci-fi, but if you think about it, the, what, what the vision of Star Atlas is to create almost a sovereign entity, a, a country on its own, where it will have its own rules, where the community will specify what these rules are or to some extent with this uh, police now, uh, Star Atlas now, I'm sorry. And, um, and in this type of world, I would like to see this world to, you know, go to, to its f- full fruition where people are able to create shops, um, educational, uh, entities like I'm planning to create a college university in, in a metaverse uh, or other people who would like to, you know, do their daily life projects they can implement in Star Atlas. So this is the vision that I, what I understood, what we understood from Star Atlas. And I think the team at, at Amata are sharing the same vision. So hopefully in the next X amount of years, and I would like to paraphrase, rephrase it again, X amount of years, this is not going to happen, uh, you know, uh, to a morning and tonight, um, where, you know, we gave the same example a few days ago, where you're going to be able to stop by at one of the one of the planets and go through the drive through of, of McDonald's and order some stuff and it will be at your doorstep in, in 20 minutes. So that's the, you know, that's the time of uh, immersion and integration and uh, engagement that uh, I'm looking forward to. And if Metaverse is going to be successful, that's how it's going to be successful. I don't think it's going to be successful with the pixelated art and pixelated um, Metaverse environments, so to speak. No offense to Meta and others, but that's how I feel about it. Is that food delivery going to be by drone? Yeah, well, speaking of which, we actually, uh, (laughs) yes. Um, that's a kind of irony. Actually, this semester we're working on a drone project at the college, uh, which will have the parking system at the university that I, I'm working at. Uh, but yeah, why not? You know, that, uh, that's what Amazon is trying for, for the X amount of years. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, a, a huge fleshed out operational immersion, like the massive immersion type of game of Star Atlas is just, it might be too big for us to even comprehend what it will actually take place when that time comes years down the line. Uh, but we can only imagine and use what we what we know now. Uh, but last but not least for you, Lumina, uh, what are the biggest benefits, if you have any in mind, uh, that you hope the council will bring to the community of Star Atlas specifically? Uh, any, um, any biggest, what are the, yeah, the biggest yeah. benefits that you might hope the whole council can bring? Absolutely. Like I said, in terms of the financial sides and the... Uh, um, which I do have some experience. I'm not coming from a finance background, but uh, I know for a fact that with the legal stuff, I won't be able to bring a lot, but this is also a sort of a you know learning curve for me, but I'll be, be exposed to it and I will learn by it. But in terms of the game development and uh, a game economy, um, with what we bring uh, as a community, not just the DAO itself, just being the representative of the community, for example, uh, with these proposals, uh, 
even though Star Atlas is a game, it is a game, but at the end of the day, language is still a barrier. So that should be a multi-level representation in the DAO where, you know, for example, pro proposals like a multi-language support by the game, and not just Unreal Engine 5, but uh, even the screen itself, also creating the content. Uh, and just, I guess, uh, part of it is also uh, sort of not blocking, but reviewing some proposals that are kind of, in a way, kind of sounds like, like lunatic proposals, which they will happen. And there's a reason why this DAO is going to happen because uh, I remember in one of the one of the town hall meetings uh, there was an interesting interesting comment by someone that uh, what if somebody uh, wants to uh, create a proposal where all of the avatars are going to be just penguins for the next uh, two hours? Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it is silly, but you know, uh, if this is something that the community enjoys, why not? But uh, you still have to be careful with these type of. Uh, proposals in the games because at the end of the day you have to have a smooth game developer environment where you get the feedback from the community and also as gamers we are and I think uh, that will be and I hope we still don't know the stage what stages of this style will have in what type of hierarchy but I would assume this style will sort of um, in a way uh, create itself in a little bubble where a little balloon where there are people with our expertise have expertise in the financial side of things there are people who have expertise in the legal side of things and then there are people who have expertise in in game development and, and gaming environment where all these three buddies combined I think this is the most healthiest DAO uh, if you ask me so um, yeah that's how I feel about it and I think uh, personally uh, this DAO, if it is created uh, properly, and I guess, I, and I would like to re, uh, repeat what I said in the beginning of the discussion, there is still not a perfect DAO out there in this space that I was exposed to. So in a way, uh, there is a learning curve for, for everyone uh, in this space, no matter how experienced they are. I mean, personally, I've been into two different DAOs before, and one of them uh, failed miserably, and the other one is working perfectly fine. Uh, but that doesn't still mean that you know that is still going to keep going like this. So uh, we have they have to be careful. But and again, we don't know like exactly how the selection is going to happen. But personally, uh, at the end of the day, I think people will definitely. Uh, sort of favor in a way the people who are kind of up in the front and out there um, and i think uh, personally me and coexist at uh, first and uh, platforms like netaverse nomads rome other guilds who are creating contents uh should be part of this uh part of the style absolutely well said uh lumina and, you know, the diversification of the council is going to be paramount here. We can't just have everyone from a certain background. So your contributions and if you are on the board, it will be a huge value add and overall uh, net positive. So uh, but last. Yeah, this was a question I asked earlier. But uh, just to add on here, do you want to go through any bullet point milestones and achievements that you guys made as a guild overall? Just so people who don't know you might be hearing this for the first time uh, know of any uh, contributions. Absolutely. Um, Coexist as a guild. Uh, we have been a gaming guild for the past uh, 15 years. And actually, uh, next year, we're going to celebrate our, our uh, next month, I'm sorry, we're going to celebrate our 16th year. But uh, Coexist has been a crypto blockchain gaming a community for the past uh, two years. It actually started in a way with Star Atlas. Um, and uh, we are, our main blockchain game is Star Atlas. And which we miss a lot, and which create content a lot. Um, uh, we have multiple different departments in our our deck, so to speak. Uh, we even have one department that is entirely for the uh, empowerment empowerment of of women. We created different types of NFT projects that uh, has resonance with our story. Speaking of our story, Coexist has its own story, and now Coexist is also writing its own own novel, uh, which is related to Star Atlas. Um, Star Atlas lore, uh, and as Ray mentioned, uh, we also have the project called the uh, the Oni Times, which is a magazine that is related to Star Atlas, Metaverse, and crypto in general. 
where we accommodate different guilds uh, each month and also have a QA and a section, uh, sessions with the Star Atlas team. Uh, also, we have really cool different types of articles uh, diversifying from uh, actual scientific articles to, to metaverse projects and so on and so forth. We are also working on a Star Atlas community game on Unreal Engine 5, which is going great. Uh, hopefully in the next month or so, we're going to have the multiplayer integration too, maybe along with the Star Atlas, Star Atlas showroom. I don't want to give up anything here, but I think uh, next month we're going to have, we're going to see a lot of surprises from Star Atlas uh, with their, uh, hopefully the second release of, of their showroom. Um, so yeah, we are into different kind of projects. We have our own merchandise to the Coexist merchandise. We have our hoodies, caps, mm -hmm. shirts, and whatnot to just to, just to have to grasp the idea of to have that a sense of belonging, and uh, and a lot of other projects that I probably uh, forgot the name of. But uh, to make the long story short, uh, I think it is really beneficial uh, for. It's some sort of a representation in the DAO where these type of content creators collectively who have not just creating the content for because it's a content creation, but have that a passion for these type of, of gaming environments, especially MMO, MMORPGs and whatnot. This is a guy who actually I kind of ditched my, my guild today. I was supposed to be in a, a Lich King, uh, Breath of the Lich King raid. And, and Onyxia, uh, not Onyxia, Anaxar was 25 today, uh, which started an hour ago, which, uh, but I can't be there with them. But uh, like I said, to make long story short, uh, this is, I think it's really important for the DAO to understand that there has to be some sort of representation in the DAO who has the passion and that that a driving force factor, uh, the people who are representing uh, the community. Uh, that's how I feel about it.